Hi guys and welcome again. Today we are doing the nature of roots. So what I want to do is introduce you again to functions because we're going to be doing functions soon. And so the nature of roots ties in very strongly with uh, functions and usually the nature of roots question is more likely to come up in a functions question rather than in paper one. So let's look at a quadratic graph. Okay, a parabola. So this would be an x squared graph. Now, if we look at this graph, we have two roots. <clears throat> two roots here. We have two roots. Now imagine that we shift this graph up to the x-axis, okay? I haven't drawn the x-axis, okay. So that's the x-axis and we'd have a y-axis as well. Um, so say we shifted the graph up to the y, the x-axis, where it just touches the x-axis, so where y is equal to zero. Well, what we've got is just one root. Okay. And if we move it even further above, say here, let's do that in. We have no roots. Okay. Or we could call this non-real roots. Because in AP maths, we use imaginary numbers to actually solve these roots. But for normal metric maths, we just say that they're non-real roots. So if this, what we see the, with the pink, where there's one root, well, that means that it's basically just touching the x-axis. So if you had a perfect square and you got two answers that were exactly the same for your x roots, that would be the pink. So let's look at our quadratic equation because when we solve for our roots, we can use the quadratic equation. <clears throat> so if I had y equals something x squared plus something x plus c. So it could be um, a x squared plus b x plus c. Um, if I wanted to solve for this, I could use the quadratic equation and the quadratic equation is key to finding the nature of roots. So when you're asked about the nature of the roots, you must think about the quadratic equation and specifically the part of the quadratic equation that comes underneath or inside the square root. So if I have, this is negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus for AC. All over 2A. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now this plus or minus. The key to nature of roots, I'm going to so is this here in purple. Let's make it a little bit bigger. This is the key to the nature of roots. Why? Because of this plus and minus. So when we solve for a quadratic, you know we always get two answers. Now sometimes those two answers are the same. So like if it was a perfect square, so let's look at that quickly. It's x squared um, plus 
2x plus 1, you get x plus 1 and x plus 1, we see that those answers are the same. And that would be the pink because you get the same root. So that pink, that would be the pink. So let's just make a note there. So this would be the pink parabola that we see down below. So let's look at the nature of roots though and how this would affect it. Well, it, it all comes down to, because there's a plus and minus, this is what gives you your two answers. Because it's a plus will give you one answer and the minus will give you the other answer. So what we do is we call this underneath this b squared minus 4ac. It's b squared minus 4ac. We call delta. Okay. So if this delta is zero, for instance, the square root of zero is zero. So plus zero and minus zero would be the same. So if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, so if delta is equal to zero, we get the same answer. So we get one root. So we get equal roots. Okay, so that's the pink line. We get the same root, they're both the same, equal. Let's say that um, the b squared minus four, let's say that uh, equal roots, if it was zero, it also means that you would have a fraction. And we remember from fractions, we would have, we, if something is a fraction, we know that it's rational. So it's zero, so it's equal and rational. So it's equal and rational roots. The other way you could get rational roots is if this b squared minus 4ac was a perfect square. So let's look at if delta is greater than zero. Okay, so if it's bigger than zero, then we're gonna have two answers and they're going to be either rational or irrational, depending on if this b squared minus four is a perfect square. Because if say this was 25, the square root of 25 is five and so we get a nice fraction. But if it was 17, we get a third, which is irrational. This is why when we did our um, real number system so that we could look at what a rational and an irrational number. So if delta is greater than zero and perfect square, it's real and rational, okay? If it's greater than zero and not a perfect square, And it's still real, but it's irrational or non-rational. And finally, what happens if delta is less than zero? Well, if it's less than zero, we have the square root of a negative. And the square root of a negative, we cannot find, it does not exist. And that is our green, where we have no roots. So we have non-real roots. Okay. So what I should have done is this should be in white because this was the white parabola where we had two roots. Okay, so that is the nature of roots. Hopefully you understood everything. Um, the next section we're gonna be doing is logs and then we are done with algebra. Um, if you didn't fully understand this section, watch it again. It is a little bit confusing the first time, so you can just rewind the video, but also don't worry because during functions, I'm gonna be going over this again. 
So we'll be doing the roots and then I might refer back to this video, but we will do it again. So don't worry if this video helped you, please uh, find the subscribe button below and, and of course uh, share and like and all that good stuff. And I will see you for logs. And after that, we'll be uh, going on to sequences and series.